world, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far, I have shared my own experiences with you of what it's like for me to live with autism. Other times, I have given my two cents on what's going on with autism in the media. And finally, I like to cover topics that I am passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with autism whatsoever. And uh, the reason why I would like to talk about these topics is because I eventually would like to take these blogs and turn them into something cool that nerds and geeks alike might enjoy. But right now, I'm going to continue to keep talking about items that revolve around autism because A, I live on the autism spectrum, and B, uh, I want to give my two cents on what's going on because I think um, our world needs to hear the truth about how things should or should not be done based on my own experiences and uh, my own point of view. So tonight I would like to talk about how I have uh, managed to break through a series of barriers and uh, how I still have barriers that still stand in my way and what I think of that. Uh, first off, I wanted to, man to mention that I don't have job coaches anymore. I don't have a respite provider anymore. I don't live with any more of my family members. I don't have somebody coming in and checking up on me every single day and showing me how I need to clean my house, and showing me how I need to cook and what I can buy, and somebody following me around like a little puppy dog and harassing me and telling me that, oh, I don't want to get in trouble with your family members because you bought that. So I'm basically not being micromanaged anymore, and I'm happy. I'm paying my own bills. I'm learning how to set money to the side in case of a major emergency, and next to also learning how to plan if I want to go to Disney World, if I want to go to Hawaii, if I want to go to the Holy Land. Yeah, just different things like that. And I'm also not learning how to say no and realizing that somebody is going to take advantage of me. And I'm also on Social Security and I happen to collect all of the income when it comes to Social Security. The problem is I, yeah, the per, you know, I'm not my own beneficiary. I have somebody else in my family as my beneficiary and they're making sure that I'm getting all of the money and they're also making sure that uh, I that we're doing everything we're supposed to versus what we're not supposed to do. and They're calling Social Security. Meanwhile, I'm also calling Social Security. Like I called them earlier this year to find out what I could and uh, could not make and what I could and couldn't do. And I also, I mean, I told my family member last, yesterday after I had gotten a job or had been offered a job at uh, the Center for Leadership and Disabilities and right downtown at Georgia State University and um, I told her to go ahead and double check and she said that she was going to do it and she, I also felt to like I'm still um, chained to that wall of that household by this great big invisible leash which is on my left ankle and no matter where I go I have to always wear the leash and it absolutely drives me crazy and I also feel like there's no talking to my family members about anything like this because I feel like they won't listen. They will sit and that they will tell me that A, I'm either victimizing or B, I'm having a pity party or or C, oh, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, huh? And, and I'm, by the way, I absolutely hate that when somebody talks to me and then they throw the word huh in there. It shows me that they don't even care. So what they don't realize too is that yes, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence and you have to mow it all the same. I learned that when I ended up living with those two roommates uh, back in 2002. And they said I had to do things like mow the lawn and take up responsibilities and not live in a fantasy world. And I'm learning that here too. Uh, things aren't always peachy keen here. I have to pay for things myself. At the same time, there is an invisible barrier between me and the rest of the world. And, you know, if I look through this invisible barrier and I see all of these wonderful neurotypicals and they're getting married and they're having an easy time finding a job at some top company because they know how to say the right things on a job interview. And these top, top companies aren't afraid of them because they're not autistic. I mean, no, I know their lives aren't perfect. I know they've got lots of problems of their own, like... They, get, they don't get, always get along with their family members or they have different personality conflicts. 
but what they don't realize is that um, people seem to look at me weird if I'm going to want to work for a company like IBM or they're going to want to look at me funny because I'm going to have a crush on um, on a superstar like Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, uh, granted, I got fu made fun of by several family members but just because I like Leonardo DiCaprio. And yet, I mean, other uh, family members like one of my sisters liked in sync and they were so cool with that and yet I got made fun of and it was just it was really annoying other things that uh, that I noticed like I wanted to volunteer as a server at a church one time and the uh, person who did a lot of stuff in the kitchen or volunteered the head I don't know the per the coordinator there uh, seemed to realize that something was quite was off, but she didn't know what was going on. She gave me an excuse. Oh, we have plenty of people to to do that, but you're more than welcome to help me in the kitchen. And then I found out that she went and asked several people in my Sunday school class that weren't on the autism spectrum to help her, and they all got serving positions, and it was painful. So that's where the barrier takes place. Things like that. And then other examples of the barriers are that uh, I can go on an interview or I can talk to people in public and I try to tell them about my Asperger's and I try to educate them and immediately they go and violate the ADA and they ask me stupid questions like what kind of services I have or do I have a social worker, are my parents helping me out, am I living with a group home? Just they're more interested in the external sources than they are in me. And it's just really annoying. It's like, I can't have a normal life like a neurotypical can. And it's because of the invisible barriers that are in place. And I'm constantly fighting to break these barriers. So, anyway, I, in closing, I would like to say, welcome to my channel. If you like what I say, please be sure to subscribe. Share this on Twitter and please help me to go viral so that other people can learn everything they can about autism. And also be sure to uh, share this on Twitter and on Facebook. Until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer and I'm signing off now. And also please uh, do not be sure, be, please also make sure to comment below. Have a good night.